I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com and it's part two of a dogfight battle between the BlackBerry Z10 and the Google Nexus 4 designed by LG. In part two, we'll figure it out and see which one is the ultimate must-have smartphone on the market, at least between these two. It's part two of a dogfight between BlackBerry and Google and it starts right now. It's part two of a dogfight battle between the Z10 and BlackBerry 10 versus the Nexus 4 and Android 4.2.2, kind of the flagship version of Android right now. It's a stock version at that. It's not running any carrier or manufacturer-based UIs or overlays. Clean and clean, BlackBerry and Google. This is as pure as you can get from a Google perspective and obviously as pure as you can get from a BlackBerry perspective because they made the hardware and they made the software. It's Dogfight Battle Part 2 between two hot devices, but before we get too far into that, going to give some love to my partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like these for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we give to you for free at Instant Win. Dot phone dog dot com. The great thing about Best Buy Mobile, whether you want Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, or T-Mobile, when you walk in, they're unbiased and they'll help you find the carrier that works best for you where you live. And they'll find that one, whether it's LTE that you want or HSPA Plus or prepaid, they'll get you all hooked up at Best Buy Mobile. So let's start into part two here. We're going to load it up and take right off with the browser on both of these devices. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind here. I was reading this article about condos in Florida because they have been cheap for some time since the recession, and it's on my list of things to invest in. But that's what I was reading over on the Nexus 4. Over here, PhoneDog.com already loaded up. This is a 4G LTE device on Verizon. So Verizon promises speeds of at least 5 to 12 megabits per second on the download. 2 to 5 megabits per second on the upload, guaranteed as part of their 4G LTE. They obviously do have the largest footprint nationwide right now when it comes to 4G LTE network rollout. Then you've got this device over here, HSPA Plus on T-Mobile and on AT&T in the States. On AT&T, it maxes out at 21 megabits per second because that's as far as they really went before they went to LTE. T-Mobile, it maxes out at 42 megabits per second if you're in a market that supports it. So a little bit slower in most cases on the speed front, though I will say I've seen T-Mobile HSPA Plus speeds that are pretty fast and can in some cases beat LTE. So keep that in mind. Depends on where you're located. Depends on the city, etc., etc. But got both of these loaded up. 42 inch display over here. Pinch to zoom relatively responsive and you can see some new browser tricks with bookmarks, history, new tab. Of course I can add tabs and you can see each time I add one a new little number pops up. So I've got my phone dog tab and I can come over here to see my settings and all of that, my downloads and more. So pinch to zoom relatively responsive here. Little to no lag over there. Portrait to landscape nice and fast. So a decent browsing machine all around. That said, still feels kind of beta in comparison to the fleshed out Google Chrome which is now part of stock Android. Pinch to zoom, incredibly responsive here. You've got your on-screen buttons, you've got your tabs, which very dynamic. The animation is quite nice. And keep playing with those, get rid of those as I see fit. I can add new tabs if I want to, just by doing that. And you can see the animations are all very fluid and very fast, keeping in mind this device has a quad-core processor. Portrait to landscape, nice and fast as well. And we'll take a look, speaking of it, speed test numbers, because I want to show you how these perform. Again, keep in mind, HSPA Plus, I am running a T-Mobile SIM card over on the Nexus 4. We'll load up Mobile Pulse, which I actually have not used. Connect to the internet. I am connected to the internet. It does not look like it's working. I am connected to the internet, so I don't know why. I've got 4G LTE loaded up and ready to go. I don't know if it means Wi-Fi or what, but I guess we will uh, hold off on that. Well, I'll show you T-Mobile's HSPA Plus over here while I'm talking about the Z10 overall. And actually, I need to talk about battery life on both of these devices anyway. 1,800 milliamp hour battery here. It does charge relatively quickly, which is a nice touch. And then over here, you've got a 2,100 milliamp hour non-removable battery, which you can access just by pressing your two fingers down here with the new quick settings in Android 4.2.2. There it is, 53% remaining, as you can see right there. And then, of course, that's my normal notifications bar. And then there is my shortcut notifications bar with my information. And then, of course, all the shortcuts that it thinks I use on a regular basis. 3.49 megabits per second is what it's showing in the downtown, I'm not downtown, but in the North Dallas area. And then upload 1.53 megabits per second. Just to give you a heads up on how Verizon applications look over here on the Z10, pretty much what you'd expect from an Android device from the iPhone version of my Verizon mobile. Pretty clean looking interface, allows you to easily check your Verizon stuff here. Bill, plan, device profile, usage summary, and more. And then I can go ahead and cancel out of that as I see fit. So obviously BlackBerry Hub is a big thing over here, but another big thing, the camera. They made a point to tout some of the features of the camera. I did not mean to click on Instagram. Let me go to 
and click on that either. Let's go to regular camera, eight megapixels over on both of these devices. And I'm gonna bring over a Note 2 that I have laying over here on my desk. And you can see I tap anywhere to take a picture, but it auto focuses in. And I can take pictures relatively quickly on this device. Then I have this feature, which I particularly like, the faces shot, where let's say I'm taking a picture, I can go, and let's say, you know what, I moved it around pretty quickly. Somebody blinked, somebody moved their head. I can pick the one where everybody's smiling and hit OK, and it saves that picture. Like that feature quite a bit. And then, of course, you've got your settings over here, detecting my faces. I'm going to delete that one because I want to show you these. Switch camera to the front facing. I can change aspect ratio, my scenes as well, between a couple of different options here. Action, whiteboard, night, beach, or snow. So if you're doing something like a soccer game, a football game, action's going to be the way to go over there. And then, of course, video camera and regular camera as well. So you've got that right here. Another cool thing over here, a little panorama mode, but then also the photosphere is a big feature as well. Now, it's one of those things kind of cool to use in some cases. I can see it and in select industries, but for the most people, it's gonna be kind of a gimmicky feature, something you might not use on a regular basis, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And basically, I just line it up with the dots. It allows me to take a picture, although this one is not particularly coming out are coming out particularly well. But I can continue to move around and you get the idea here. I didn't mean to bump the camera, but you get the idea here as to what it's done thus far. Bam, bam, and you can kind of get an idea of what my photosphere, that is a terrible looking photosphere, but you kind of get the idea of what an image is supposed to look like. So I can go back here and take a look at my photosphere, rendering the panorama right now, and it's taking its sweet time. Rendering, rendering, which it probably should take a time to render that terrible picture, but rendering up right now. So a cool feature right there, camera, I'm not honestly a huge fan of either camera on the Nexus 4 or on the Z10. I think uh, in a lot of cases for me, my images a little bit washed out, a little bit of too much noise in each one of the shots. That said, overall, I'd give the award to the Nexus 4. I find that it is a slightly better camera all around. Definitely some cool stuff here, Story Maker, and then you got the faces shot feature, which is nice our best, best faces, I should say, and then over here we'll take a look really quickly at Quadrant Standard just so you can see how it performs over on the Nexus 4. And while that's loading up, I'll take a look at the Blackberry, uh, Blackberry world over here. Shazam, I don't know if people still say that anymore, but Shazam. And then of course Twilight Saga loading up, I can search, I can find my categories as well, but again, keeping in mind it's an all touch-based operating system, it takes a little bit of time to get used to, but then once you get used to it, relatively easy to work with for the most part. Now, like I said, 1800 milliamp hour battery here, relatively quick to charge. Battery life not nearly as good as previous BlackBerry smartphones. So if you're somebody coming from an older BlackBerry, you want that same state-of-the-art battery life where you're not gonna get it over here because the trade-off comes by way of a bigger screen and by an HD display and 4G LTE you do lose battery life. Over here, battery life's equally unimpressive on the Nexus 4. I get about 10 hours with moderate use on the Nexus 4. Not great by any stretch of the imagination. It charges fine. I wouldn't say fast or slow, but the battery does deplete pretty quickly for me on the Nexus 4. I carried this as part of a 30-day challenge, and that was probably my biggest annoyance about the Nexus 4 was the battery life. Was not impressed with that. What I am impressed with, incredible design, stock Android and the latest version at that. So for people that like stock Android, it's a great option if you want to hack root mod or if you just want a great Android starter device, it's fantastic. And the price point makes it really compelling all around at 300 bucks without a contract. 4,118 over there on the Nexus 4. So a tough dogfight battle by any stretch of the imagination and it's gonna depend on what you like the most on these devices. If you like BBM, you like the email reliability that historically has come from BlackBerry, you like the more industrial look and feel, you dig in the Z10, you like the all gesture navigations, it's gonna be a great device for you. If you want stock Android, you want beautiful glass on your device, you want a low cost of entry full retail, the Nexus 4 is gonna be your device. Ultimately, a winner has to be declared in the dogfight. So the winner of this dogfight, are you ready? Is the Nexus 4. Nexus 4 wins the dogfight for a couple of different reasons. Low price point, 299 bucks, no contract, a great option for people. Whereas if you walked into a Verizon store and bought this no contract, expect to pay upwards of 450 bucks and more, 450 to 600 bucks for Z10. It's still got work to do. It's definitely by far the best thing BlackBerry's put out in some time. A fantastic revision. BlackBerry 10's got a lot to like. They need to continue to grow that app store, get it on multiple carriers, and then continue to develop the various form factors. I'd love to see the Q10. It's coming soon with a physical QWERTY keyboard. I think that's going to be great for people that are used to traditional BlackBerry, but want something that brings together a fusion of 21st century BlackBerry with the Z10, or with BlackBerry 10, 
but then brings together a keyboard from the Blackberries of old. Should be a great device all around. Impressed with the Z10, the award goes to the Nexus 4 for its combination of features, performance, and availability. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage on both of these devices. Let me know what you want to see at PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Let me know what you think of both of these devices on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hi Aaron Baker, and then on Google Plus as well at gplus.to slash PhoneDog. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.